When it's chilly outside, many city residents may start out their day with a cup of joe. Well, here at Bridgeport Coffee Company on the south side of Chicago, they're making their very own, and they start out with raw coffee beans from around the world that look like this and turn them into beautiful beans that look like this. That's right, along with big cities known for their coffee like Seattle, Portland, and San Francisco, Chicago is making a name for itself in the coffee biz. Bridgeport Coffee Company has been roasting up coffee beans for the last four years, adding to Chicago's flavor profile of coffee companies, including Intelligentsia and Metropolis. Bridgeport Coffee roasts five unique blends of Chicago-inspired coffee. There's the breakfast blend, there's the full-bodied stockyard blend. The espresso blend is named Hard Scrabble. The first name of Bridgeport. It was the first ghetto. It's where the Irish immigrant workers lived who dug the sanitary canal. Then there's the Bubbly Creek blend. And Bubbly Creek is a waterway. It's just a few blocks away. It's actually called the South Branch of the Sanitary Canal. It's, everybody knows it as Bubbly Creek. Last but not least, there's their mild blend. And the one that is liked by all is called the Mayor's Blend, of course. It helps to send a message about who we are as a company, where we come from. And I think it's good that the products reflect that. The company's beginnings stem from the Bridgeport Coffee House at 3101 South Morgan Street in West Bridgeport. It was coincidence I was living here in this neighborhood and walked by this space. There was a four lease sign on it and I looked in the window and these beautiful cabinets were here. It just looked like a coffee shop and for sure I felt that this neighborhood needed a place like this. The coffee shop opened its doors in 2004 with the intention of being a modern day tavern so to speak to the surrounding community. For 60 years this space was a pharmacy. It had a pay phone and a soda fountain and it was really the social center of the community. The idea always was that the coffee shop could be the social center of the community. We really intended to be more than merchants. We met children when they were born and now six years old. I mean, we're just growing up with the community. With the success of the coffee house, Michael and his team began to roast their own coffee with this small sample roaster, making small batches in the basement of the coffee house. They began to roast so much of their own coffee they needed a bigger space and a bigger roaster. They now roast 11 types of coffee beans from around the world in a facility west of the coffee shop in the same building as Filbert's Root Beer, Chicago's longest standing soda pop factory. So right up these stairs is where they're making Bridgeport coffee. They start every morning, bright and early at 6.30. I'm not a morning person, thank goodness. Yes, I have my coffee. So let's go see how they do it. There are bags of beans, beans everywhere from all around the globe. Like most coffee companies, they buy most of their beans from brokers, but also buy directly from farmers in Papua New Guinea, Costa Rica, and Kenya. Today we're roasting coffee from Nicaragua with the help of owner Michael Pilkington's son, Michael. Do you drink coffee before you get started or you just naturally get a coffee high just from roasting? Um, no, I drink coffee before we get started. That's, okay. that's the morning ritual. You guys have um, supplied me with my, you know, my coffee. Your coffee for the day. So I'm good. I'm okay. amped up and ready to go. All right, awesome. Our first step is getting the beans in the roaster. They roast 150 pounds a day, 37.5 pounds at a time. So these are just raw right off the tree coffee beans. That's right. Once we accurately measure out the beans, it's time to pour them in the roaster. Whew, I'm getting tired. This is a workout. You can come back every day. It's a lot easier just to watch you. Yeah, I yeah. bet. I bet it is. <laughs> now it's time to get serious. We're getting to the scientific and potentially dangerous part of the game. We're working with a roaster with a 3000 BTU burner, which is two to three times as powerful as the average household furnace. You know, if something's going to go wrong, this is when it's going to go wrong. Okay, is when we're going to start the roast chamber. We kind of get in the habit of standing just like this so we can keep an eye on everything and uh, nothing's in the way of the burner. Now we're going to activate the roast cycle. Hit this button and you're going to go back and turn the gas on. Seems easy enough. I hit the button which, much like an oven, turns on the timer to start the process. I'm turning on the gas. Get ready for a super flame. Look at that! Ooh. Unlike an oven, however, we can't kick back and relax while the beans roast. We've got to keep a close eye on the temperature. Basically what we want is the roast chamber to reach 
anywhere between 595 and 605 degrees as soon as possible. Okay. That's about where we want to keep that roast curve. Right now, we're at 514. We need to hike up the temperature a little bit, so we're going to open this gas up. Blow this baby up. With more juice, the flame gets hotter and the temperature starts to rise to our goal of 595. This roaster is a little bit different than a typical roaster in other factories. Right. This is an air roaster. What most other places use would be like a drum roaster. What this basically does is just, it uses hot air, almost like a blow dryer, to heat up the coffee. A drum roaster cooks the coffee, heats the coffee up, instead of using the hot air like the inside of this chamber does. And how does that affect the taste of the coffee? We just think the air roaster gives us a lot more uh, room to play with the coffee, you know, as far as adjusting the temperature and the roast time. Being able to manipulate the temperature and time or roast curve allows them to get different flavors from the beans. They roast this particular Nicaraguan coffee bean for eight minutes. But when that time is up, they have to act fast. There's 30 seconds to turn off the gas, turn on the cooling chamber, and get the beans out of the heat. I take this and you want to rake those out of there. Okay, we got to get this out of here fast. It's got to get out fast. Okay. Can't leave these in here too long or they'll get too overdone. Right? Yeah. Okay. The last step in the process is to carefully sort through the beans to pick out any unwanted pebbles or rocks. And if, if you find a rock or you see a rock, it'll really stand out against the, the dark brown beans. It'll look, you know, like, um, you'll just see like a speck of white out of nowhere. With no stones or pebbles on the loose, we have completed our mission of roasting a batch of Bridgeport coffee. Yep, that's it. All right. All right, Sweet. good job. The beans are either put in a sealed container to degas before they are ground or bagged right away and are shipped out to retailers. All in all, they roasted 50,000 pounds of coffee in 2009 and expect to roast 65 to 70,000 pounds in 2010. As for the future of Bridgeport Coffee, they hope to continue to be a neighborhood staple where customers can feel like family and learn a little something about specialty coffee. And they want to continue to represent Chicago by building relationships with coffee growers around the world. It's not only are we proud to be from Chicago, but we are received well as we travel. There's a big future for, um, for a really high-end coffee, specialty coffee, 